Hello makers, welcome to the Maker Studio page. Coffee and crafting this week and we are starting this week off with a fun project. And my name is Christy Barron if you're new to the Maker Studio page. And I have been invited by Amy to bring you a great project. I have a studio in Northern California where I teach art and fun art and crafting to all ages. Um, and I just love to create. It's a passion of mine. You can find me over on my Facebook page, Joyful Art Studio with Christy, on Instagram, YouTube, all those fun places. But today I have a great project using the Maker Studio stencils. And so today we're going to use several of these supplies that they have in the Maker Studio shop to do a super easy but awesome project. So we are going to start off with this fun stencil. Look at that. This is the Paris postcard stencil. And if you can see, look at that incredible detail. Isn't that fun? You just can't get that kind of detail in any other kind of stencil besides these mesh stencils that act a bit like a silk screen. And so we're going to do something with that. We are going to make a bag and this bag is the one we're going to work with and they also have those in the store. So I'm going to show you some ways to spice up this fun canvas bag to put all your to-go things in the car and I love having a bag that I can throw my laptop or my iPad with all my snacks and my things for the day as I'm driving around my kids around town or on a road trip, it's always nice to have a bag. I call it my car bag that I keep by my feet with my reading materials and all kinds of good stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna turn my camera down so you guys can see everything I'm doing and that way you won't miss anything. Reminding you also to share and then tag three friends down below in the comments and they're gonna be giving away one of these awesome stencils to one of you so then you can do this project as well or maybe you have some awesome ideas to do with this stencil i can think of a dozen right off the top of my head i love these ones that function as a background um, element as well so so many cool things you can do and that will be what we're going to do first down below so i'm going to turn it down that way you won't miss anything Okay, so I have got several things here. This is a bag from Maker Studio and it comes solid white. And I have done a quick and easy dyeing technique to get this fun bottom color. So let me just tell you how I did that real quick. Um, I just took my canvas bag. I did not pre-treat it. It was solid white when I received it from Maker Studio. What I did was I took a tub, I put water in it, maybe not even two to three inches at the most, probably closer to two inches. And then I took some of this one step paint in the aubergine. It's this beautiful deep plum color. And I put a tablespoon or two in here and I whisked it together really, really well. And then I took my bag, I held my handles away because I didn't want them to get dyed. And I just laid the portion, just like so, down in the water and let it absorb. And so at the edge, you'll get this fun little watercolor technique there. I love that. And I just let it kind of made sure I peeked inside, made sure all of the bottom was absorbing the ink or the paint actually. And once that was done, I picked it up, let it drip. I even gave the bottom a good squeeze. And then I went and hung it somewhere like your shower or your bathtub where it's easily cleaned. And when it's dry, this is what I have. So I have this beautiful dyed bag, and this is a nice wide bag. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do kind of a fun, um, I'm gonna do two prints of this across, 
and kind of shift it a little bit as I go. And you'll see what I mean. Just because I don't want the exact same image right next to each other, I think that it will be more visually pleasing if I have a little bit and then shift it for another section. You'll, that'll make sense in a minute. So I've got my squeegee and this is the ones that come in those new sets and it has several different edges and I tend to like the one that is a little bit curved and then I, I use this thin flat side. I put my ink on this side and then I have some of the black gel art ink and that's what I'm going to be printing my stencil with onto my bag and then I have a piece of cardboard. Any cardboard will do. I kind I do like um, something that is sturdy. I don't like to just put a piece of paper in there because I want to have something that will give it some structure when I am printing. And so I'm gonna stick it inside there and you're gonna kind of notice that the bottom has this fold in it. And I want my board on top of the fold between the fold and the outer bag because I don't want the ridge from that fold to be in my stencil. I hope that makes sense. And so down in the comments below, if you have any questions, make sure and drop them there and I will be sure and come back and answer them throughout the day. Make sure everything was crystal clear for you. I'm gonna take this guy out and I always like to fold down the sticky because otherwise it just likes to get stuck all over me. I'm going to slip out my stencil. I'm gonna leave my cardboard in there to use it for storage. And look how fun that is. I mean, goodness, all that detail. And it's going to translate onto our bag, which is gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice peel and I've, Put my cardboard in there. My cardboard's just the backing off of some paper, like when you buy watercolor paper or sketchbook paper or something. That's I save all those backings for things like this, just for something to give me some structure when I'm doing different projects. So I'm making sure my board was up against this seam because I'm gonna work from seam to seam. I think that will be um, pretty much two of these stencils. So I'm gonna peel this off and put that aside. And my first one, I'm going to do, line it up here kind of at the bottom. I'm really gonna rub it in there so the adhesive is nice and secure on my bag. And I typically can go ahead and shift it and do another one. Um, it's personal preference, whatever you like. You could pick it up and move it and wash it in between, but especially with a stencil like this, it's meant to be a bit of a distressed background. So any little um, pieces that might, <coughs> excuse me, not translate perfectly, it, it'd probably be okay. So I'm gonna put, I like to just put my ink on there. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to, I'm gonna think about starting a little bit lower on this side. And I'm gonna just kinda go on this organic line. I'm gonna leave that part off. And then I'm going to put the postcard word over here that so that I don't have like exactly the same thing. So I'm just kind of visually making this organic line. When I say organic line, I just mean I'm not measuring it. I don't want it to be perfectly straight. I already have this, you know, fun, imperfect line across the top with the watercolor effect from the dip dye. And so I want to let that be. And you're gonna notice when you do things with fabric that it is super thirsty and it is going to 
really suck up your ink. So it's gonna use a lot more ink than on a project that is non-porous. So where is everybody watching from? I love hearing about that. And also let me know what kind of projects are you working on? What kind of projects do you wanna see? I, you know, I always have lots of ideas, but it doesn't mean I have all the ideas. So I love to hear what everybody is enjoying in their creative time. Because you might inspire me to do something. Or maybe you want us to show you something that you think will be cool, but you're not quite sure how to make that happen. So we don't know those things unless you tell us. So drop us a comment and see what happens. Notice how much ink I'm going through for this particular type of a project, just soaking right in there. But that's okay, you know, it, there's always the potential it could soak to the other side, but this canvas is pretty heavy and we've got our cardboard in there. So I'm gonna make sure I get off this excess Put that to the side. I'm gonna peel this up. Oh, look how cool that looks. So fabulous. Okay, and I'm gonna readjust this. Give it a rub. I love, these are my favorite kind of stencils that have kind of a, you know, a collage of designs and oh, it looks like old memorabilia, just a rustic pattern in the background. And I'm gonna, again, I don't want my line to be perfectly straight. Oops, I forgot to shift my cardboard over. I felt it when I went right here. I had a little bit of a ridge. And I like the black with the purple. That's kind of a fun contrast. Taking a little peek. And I'm gonna kind of leave some of this open over here. I think that will be kind of cool, like not perfectly rectangle. There we go. Ooh, fun. Okay, so there we have our print, and I may come back. I probably should have shifted those together a little bit, but that is totally okay. I'm gonna just flip it over and kind of collage a little bit with it again. And I like how I didn't complete over here. I just kind of like this um, texture and um, a bits and pieces of it showing. So once you're done with this, you're going to want to heat set it once it's dry. So you're going to let it dry, then you're going to put, you know, you could use an old cloth, an old sheet between your bag and your iron and give it a good iron for a few minutes, just moving all over the place up to five minutes. And that's going to heat set your bag for you so that you can wash it. Okay, so make sure you are tagging some friends down below, giving us some shares, and also don't forget, 
Don't be shy with your questions. I'd be happy to come back and answer those for you. And we look forward to seeing you back here every day this week for Coffee and Crafting with other awesome makers and what they have to share. See ya.